A popular option for people looking for a pretty much plug and play, ready to go retro emulation console has been these little systems from Ken Hank. They put out quite a few over the past few years. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new one that they say is new and improved once again, that has performance improvements, it uses a different chipset, all sorts of things, right? And we'll be the judge of that. So this is the Super Console X2 Pro new for 2023. And I've reviewed quite a few of these and a lot of times these things are just ROM dumps. And I just like to be upfront with you guys and explain what it is you'd be getting yourself into. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna test out a buttload of games, really see is this thing new and improved or is it once again, uh, just a ROM dump? Is it worth your money? Because they've also said not only is it new and improved but they're selling it for a lower price point, which when I looked on Amazon, um, this model, they have three of them, a 64 gigabyte, a 128 gigabyte, and a 256 gigabyte, which is what this one is. Uh, this one, the 256, is $135, but they have a coupon on Amazon right now. Yeah, it's crazy that you can buy these things on Amazon. There's a lot of things you probably shouldn't be able to buy on there, but yeah, you get $20 off, it's like 115 bucks. And that doesn't sound too bad, but is it worth it? Because every time I do one of these videos, I, I kind of explain like, hey, the little box they give you, like it's just a little Android box. This has a uh, Emulec 4.5 and Android 9.0. So it's like a dual boot system. But one of my points is like, if you want to do it yourself, you can do it for a heck of a lot cheaper, even with their supposed lower price point. I don't know what exact model uh, Android box this is, but typically the ones that these guys be using or any of these companies, you could typically find the same box for between 20 to maybe $60 and then just download a build or build your own and save some money. So yeah, they did it for you. So some people might be able to justify the extra cost, but okay, you get the system here. Uh, we got local area network, uh, HDMI, power, AV, two USB ports, the micro SD card slot, and that's about it. The one nice thing though with this one is it has a power switch. A lot of these never have power switches, so you could actually power on and off. HDMI cable, a USB dongle, a hub for some reason, power supply, then the remote for the Android side of things. We don't really bother with that. We just worry about the games. Then you get two of these PS2 style controllers. And this one, where did, it, where did I drop it? There's like a little dongle somewhere. There it is. Uh, this time, you only need one that syncs both controllers. It even tells you down there. So, okay, cool. Now, I've taken some notes as I have tested this thing out quite a bit, and I'm gonna show a ton of gameplay here, uh, but we've tested a lot of stuff. So this thing has 107,833 games built in, 73 systems. That's a lot, right? So it's also using the S905X2 chip which has caused them to lower the price, I guess, and they say the performance is fine, but we'll go ahead and find out about that, right? So as always, eight and 16-bit stuff with these devices is gonna be fine. You're not gonna have too much of an issue with that. Same thing with your handhelds, from like Game Boy to DS. DS works just fine on here, Virtual Boy. You're not gonna have any issues, but one thing worth pointing out is I did notice that some of the handhelds, they have, everything pretty much has bezels on, um, sometimes the bezels will cover part of the gameplay area. So that's kind of annoying. You may have to go into RetroArch and readjust, resize the bezels or change the aspect ratio, whatever. You may have to turn the bezels off if you want. And you can get into that by pressing select and uh, Y on the controller to get into that. So yeah, you may have to do some little tweaking here and there. Now moving on, we're just rapid fire through everything that I tested. So arcade stuff. I played a lot of stuff from Final Burn Alpha and MAME on here, CPS 1, 2, and 3. And all that stuff seems good for the most part, uh, but aspect ratios. I did notice on CPS, they have them stretched instead of the you know, actual aspect ratio the game should be in. Some people don't mind that, but some people want the original aspect ratio. So another thing, you may have to go into RetroArch and fix that if you so choose, right? And uh, another thing with these, these devices, with these ROM setups, Duplicates always pump up the numbers here, and this one's gonna be no different. Out of that 107,000 games, almost 108,000 games, there's a lot of duplicates. Every system has duplicates. So just to tell you that, you know, 
right here, right now, you're going to find systems that not just every region, but you'll have like five Japanese versions of the same game, 10 English versions of the same game. And it just fluffs it out quite a bit. And then they also do mix ROM hacks with normal systems and then separate them. So there'll be duplicates of the same game in multiple areas inflating that number. It's a little ridiculous, but okay, moving on. Nintendo 64, as usual, is a mixed bag. Some things will run smooth as butter, while others will be janky as all hell. Some may just have minor glitches. So you may have stuff like in GoldenEye 007, missing assets like the sky is gonna be missing, uh, which is like an emulator issue. You could change the emulator and hopefully not have an issue with that. They did um, include some videos that I thought were kind of weird and interesting, but they do have some tutorial videos built into this build that you could watch to teach you how to do some things. I think it also covers that in the manual, but okay, yeah, kind of weird stuff. But then also with uh, Nintendo 64, there's some games, man, like that Yoshi story. I, I felt like I was on acid or something. That game just was glitched the hell out. So always a mixed bag with Nintendo 64. I don't even know why they bother. Like you're gonna know the handful of games that should run well, just put those, you don't have to put everything. But all right, a Thomas Wave. So I played a bunch of Thomas Wave, everything ran fine, which was kind of surprising because sometimes these devices don't play every Thomas Wave game very well, uh, but here it seemed like everything ran decent. And then Dreamcast, pretty much everything I played ran fine. Like I was surprised, everything was really smooth here, but I did try playing Dead or Alive 2 just because I like that game and it wouldn't load. That's what this system's gonna be notorious with is you're gonna run into games that just won't load. But I did play the Naomi version of Dead or Alive 2 and that played, didn't play fine though, it had slowdown, but that game booted up. So yeah, they may have some messed up ROMs here or something just not right, but okay. PSP, so PSP, uh, they have several hundred games here, but as usual, most of them are minis. And a lot of times the minis run okay. But of the few regular PSP games that are on here, some actually played really well, like Final Fantasy VII uh, Crisis Core. Surprised me, the game ran nicely, I think. And then you have other games like the God of War games that just run really slow. They'll be very sluggish. You're gonna have to do some manipulation, lower the resolution, frame skip, and then to me it just, it, it's not as playable anymore, so I'm not even gonna bother. But yeah, it's gonna be hit and miss with some of those PSP games. Now Sega Saturn, they have a handful of games here, and just like previous ones that I've looked at, it's, it seems like they're mostly games that they know will run well. Um, and I've had some issues with 2D games before though on these devices, like Street Fighter Alpha playing slow, but on this system, on this setup, it played just fine. So that was cool. Then uh, Panzer Dragoon, which is one of the only 3D games they included, it, it kind of ran okay, but it, it was definitely slower than it should be. For some people, it may still be playable, but I wouldn't play it just because I noticed it doesn't play as, as smooth as it should. Um, and then your Neo Geo stuff, which should really be lumped in with the 8 and 16 bit you know, thing where, hey, all this stuff runs fine. Uh, but they do have Neo Geo CD games on here and a buttload of them. Um, but I did find a few that just wouldn't load. But out of everything else I tested, they all loaded fine and had no issues. So you'll find a few that just don't load. Like I said earlier, that's an issue here. And then finally, uh, PS1. PS1 should run on pretty much almost anything out there. A potato, your mom's vibe, a cheap ass single board computer. And it shouldn't have a problem with this system either. And it doesn't as far as the games actually running and playing fine. They have hundreds of games here. Usually they'll keep it down to like a hundred or so, but here they had like six or 700 games. And I think they either used some crazily compressed ROMs or incorrectly ripped ROMs as every single game that I played that should have CD music, CD audio, uh, didn't play the music, only sound effects. Every PS1 game was like that. It was ridiculous. And then for the, the final test, 3DO. Need for Speed. If you've been following along all these videos, you know there's a problem with Need for Speed. Either it runs really slow, like one, one out of 10 times, because the other nine times on these devices, it's not even Need for Speed for 3DO. It's some weird anime 
uh, romance, dating, mahjong game. And that's what it is here. So that leads me to believe they're really not doing anything other than putting a big dump of ROMs on a device and just hoping people buy it. It's a little frustrating, a little annoying, but hey, to me at this price point, it, it doesn't seem crazy expensive, but it's a low effort device. Just throw it out there and hope people buy it. You know, this isn't even something that should be being sold out there, but I just like sharing my thoughts with you guys so you understand because these things really do seem popular. But I, for me, it's like, it's quality over quantity. Instead of 108,000 games, you could put like 10 to 20,000 games and make sure you're only putting stuff that works, not a bunch of duplicates, uh, you, you know, have things organized properly. Then it would be like, dude, I, I know this is kind of a, you know, something that, that, that it's not gray area, it just they don't have any rights to sell this stuff. But it would be like, damn, that's a reasonable price for getting something so clean. Right? But it's not. They never are. And I don't think they're going to learn their lesson after all these videos I do. Let me know what you guys think. Really do appreciate you watching. Bye.